You won't forget I want to buy flowers in Penzance. I shall throw them into Max's coffin. Violets. Wrong time of year, great aunt. You'll only get chrysanthemums. Max hated chrysanthemums. They made him sneeze. They'll have violets at the shop in Causeway Head. Well, I'll... You must try. Max bought some for Monica from a barrow at Paddington the night she tried to kill herself and we all dashed down to Cornwall. <laughs> Nearly made us miss the train. <laughs> Silly, really. They'd have been grown in Cornwall, and at very much this time of year. Well, if you say so. When you consider the horrors of war, it's remarkable that it was guinea pigs which gave Monica a breakdown. are you doing here? Where's Helena? I saw the front door. Thought she'd forgotten about the blackout. Tony! Steady on! It's all right. Calm down. <laughs> Give a chap a chance to breathe. I went to Polly's. There was no one there. So I came here and found it was unlocked. I thought you were at school. I was. I ran away. Ah... What's been going on? Not exams. A boy, is it? No! It wasn't that. They said... They said I was in love with... With Miss Stevens. How could I be with a woman? It happens. Does it? Well, men love men. That's different. <laughs> yes. They go to prison. Women don't. The laws on sex are rather obfusk. I wish I knew about sex. What the girls say at school is patently untrue. I long to know. No, you'd laugh. Oh, God, I'm tired. Bed, then. Where the hell have they all gone? Drink up your milk and then find somewhere to tuck down. I'll ring round and try to sort out what's going on. Fuck up, Sophie. I'm whacked. Did you speak to anyone? No one at home. We'll sort it out in the morning. I'll kick down on the sofa. I borrowed this. Do you think Aunt Helena will mind? She's got gallons of Chanel 5 in there. And Elizabeth Arden makeup. What do you think this is? Where did you find it? Is it medicinal? You could say that. Something like a truss for a bosom. Put it back where it came from and go to bed. All right. Mm, you stink. It's the scent. I didn't mean to use so much. Why don't you sleep in here if you're so tired? Oh, for God's sake, Sophie, you're too old for this kind of thing. Or well, perhaps I mean too young. Sorry. Oh. Who are you? You weren't at the party last night. 
I'm a friend of Helena's. I met her through Polly and Calypso. My nieces? Then you must be Sophie's aunt. She's upstairs. Sophie's at school? Uh, she's asleep in Helena's bed. Or was when I last saw her. She ran away. Has there been a fire? I came to see Helena's daily. Why did she run away? I think she'd better tell you herself. She was very upset last night. She doesn't want to go back. And to run away if she wanted to stay. No. I suppose... Thank you. I have to go and see Calypso. I can take Sophie with me. You must be Oliver's mother. Yes. How is Oliver? Oliver, did you say? Oh, Aunt Sarah. How is Oliver? I'm so glad to see you. Well, dear, go and uh, put a dressing gown on. You'll catch cold in that thing. Isn't it beautiful? I can't think we're on Helen to get to the coupons. I'll make you some breakfast. Then we'll catch a bus and go and see Calypso. I gather something's happened to Hector. If he's dead, Oliver will be delighted. Mind the dog mess. He's not been out yet. I don't suppose he could last. It's long after ten. We'll clean up presently. Mrs Welsh doesn't like him. I thought you were at school, Sophie. I've run away. Oh, I was asked to leave mine. Accused of flirting with the gardener. Spotty you. It was an insult to my intelligence. You haven't heard, I suppose. Hector's dead. I had a telegram. Oh, no, darling. But I was coming to say... We had a letter from Oliver. How oh, is Boyles? What Boyles? Oliver's. Hector wrote and said Oliver had desert Boyles. Didn't he tell you? No. Is there anything I can do? Oh, no thanks, Aunt. Nothing at all. When did you hear? Why haven't you... Why haven't I told you all? Rather be alone, I suppose. Except I'm not alone. There's this bloody bulge. Naturally, you're upset. Why can't they tell the truth? Missing, believed, killed. They only say that because they haven't found the body, just to prolong the agony. Of course, when you love someone. I don't know what love is. I married Hector for his money. He's made a will, separate provision for the child if I marry again. So, once the bulge and I are separate, everything will be OK. That about wraps it up. I'll go and clean up that mess and take Fling for a run. Fling! His lead's in the hall. Why don't you stay with me, Sophie, love, while they get used to the idea you're not going back? Do you think they'll let me? Yes, I do. Monica's tried to kill herself. Tony rang me before you came. Oh, don't worry, she didn't succeed. Aunt Helena will be smoothing things down in Cornwall. Aunt Sarah can't have you in Bart. She's busy with her WVS. You stay here and amuse me. If only I could. You can. We'll fix it. What did you say about Monica? Aunt Sarah only said she was ill. All Tony knows is she tried to jump off a cliff. She wouldn't fall far. The army brought the terror on with barbed wire. Was Tony drunk last night? No. You were lucky. Everybody's drinking. It's the war. The moment it makes me sick. Oh, here's one from Oliver. Is it? As soon as I'm delivered of this lump, I shall go on a bender. Do you want to read this? But it's for you. That doesn't matter. I'm going to take a bath. And then we'll light the fire. Can I really stay? Of course. The bulge and I will be pleased to have you. I'll go and dress. Oliver. 
Snoopy. You were listening. Yes. You shouldn't do that. I happen to be here. I often am. Somebody told me before the rehearsal. A friend has heard it. Polly is dead. Your son? Are you sure it's true? Yeah, I, I believe so. There's a man in Vienna who makes deals with the Nazis, and from him he heard it. Polly was ill and died. It was in a place called Dachau. Oh, Max, I'm sorry. I've lost my son. What can I say to Monica? Why did we run away? Vassals, you heard the music. Now, I take you to Calypso. Hello, Sophie. I'm reading Hector's cellar. News! The Lord and Master is alive and well in prison camp. <laughs> Only slightly missing after all. <laughs> You're here in time to celebrate. Oh, nice. <laughs> Wonderful! <laughs> oh, what joy, my dear Calypso! Bubbly, <laughs> nicht? I open this for you. Go into the kitchen. I find some glasses. <laughs> What have you heard? It appears Hector was on some stupid secret raid behind German lines. I told him he was much too old for that kind of thing. Then Rommel had the same idea and had to go at us. So Hector and his pals caught it in the neck, but the funny thing is... Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rommel's attack was going to name Midsummer Night's Dream. Summer Night's Dream? strong? <laughs> What's funny about that? Oh, no, you wouldn't understand. Oliver would, though. Anyway, here's to Hector and his bulge. Prost. Making tea. Calypso, darling. You 
still use Mitsuko? Oh, not gray hair. Not even a rinse. How many years? Why are, are you here? doing... <laughs> the funeral's tomorrow. It doesn't show much, does it? I thought I'd come the night before the wake. I'll have to buy some booze. Any idea who's coming? Neighbors, I suppose. Friends. Other artists. Hamish is bringing Helen over. Oh, her age? Crikey. She enjoys funerals. She was at Richard's and Monica's and both the Floyers. She even turned up at General Peacham's. Seems excessive. I wanted to look around the house. I suppose it'll be sold now. Powley won't want it. I'm sure he doesn't. Remember those holiday breakfasts? Uncle Richard crumpling the times. <laughs> Monica smartened things up a lot. The bedrooms were always comfortable. Oh, cold in winter. Not since Max put in central heating. This room had the finest view. Uncle Richard died in it. I found him, Uncle Richard. Gone again. He was halfway down a rabbit hole. Yeah. I'm buggered too. I'll get the vet tomorrow. No good. Can't move his legs. <sighs> Both done for. <laughs> I ask you. Sophie. Just Sophie, isn't it? Yes. Closer. Bury him with me. You mean ducks? In coffin. Promise. Uncle Richard, I don't think I can. I stay with him. He will rest now the dog is found. Say. I promise. <gasps> Sophie Lock. Did you know? I never realized he was so beautiful. He was busy making us feel beautiful. No need to whisper. He doesn't look his age. He's as old as Aunt Helena. Not quite. Yes, one forgets. My goodness, it's a long time. We were an ignorant lot in those days. Very. Who did you sleep with first? Who was your first lover? Mine was Hector. Nobody believed it, but Hector was my first. It didn't take me long to find he was the best, too. Oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't even kiss Hector goodbye. <laughs> What's funny? I just remembered. Max smuggling the dog into Uncle Richard's coffin. Why on earth did he do that? It's what he asked for when he was dying. He made me promise. Max tipped the undertaker to look the other way. Oh, the old rogue. He had compassion. Oh, I am an idiot. Of course. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Your first was him. Hmm. You too. What a philanderer. But faithful to Monica and Helena, after his fashion... If you like a menage à trois. Country wife and town wife. They were happy. Hmm. <laughs> Shall we make that tea? I wonder why they haven't closed the coffin. Why the house is empty. We'd better stay and keep them company. Oh, I don't want to. I've got a room at the Queen's. 
Somebody should stay until Polly comes. Oh, of course. Oh, that's why it's open. I've forgotten Polly. Yeah, people do. He isn't one of us, is he? Come and spend the night at the Queen's. I'll pay. We've so much to catch up on, do. It's been so many years. Tell me something. Did Hamish want to marry you? <laughs> I'm almost old enough to be his mother. I was there, remember. Oh! Oh! I like being rich. Always have. So you said. You said you didn't know what love was. But you lied. Oh. What makes you think that? When Hamish was born, you gave yourself away. Oh. I don't remember saying anything. I remember yelling a lot. When you saw him, when you looked at him, you said, his balls are as big as Hector's. Your voice. I'd never seen a newborn baby. It gave me a shock. You sounded as if you loved him. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Still haven't answered my question. It wouldn't have worked. Too young to know his own mind? Of course. He never married anyone else. Time enough. But we might have got on. You and me. You could have provided me with a grandchild. Hector would have liked that. Cousins? Not too close. Walter was too close. And Oliver? Does he ever come to England? I wouldn't know. Tax dodging, I suppose. A famous author. I never liked his books. Sure you won't come to the Queen's? It's comfortable. Thanks. I've got to go and buy that booze before they're shut. See you in church tomorrow, love. <laughs> Curious, they should have both died in that house. Who? What both? My husband, Richard, my lover, Max. I sold it to Max after Richard died. I had the London houses. Richard called me a fool to buy them in the Blitz. Two thousand pounds a pair of them. As little as that. Good. I want to refill this and go to the lavatory. Can I help? Entirely senile. Get that filled. I like that sixty nine. Right. I'll see you in the bar. Hello. That's Polly's car. She's driving Iris and James down. We can all arrive together. Well, 
look who's here. Oh. Hello, James. Uh, can I buy you one? I'm driving the last lap. Mm -hmm. Mother and Iris are in the loo. With great aunt Helena. Quite a journey. She's been reminiscing. So has mother. That's what happens at funerals. Any cats out of bags? Uh, not exactly. Tiny clarification. About our backgrounds. Oh? Aren't they pretty stable? Considering us all, I'd say they were remarkably stable. What are you on about? Well, we have two fathers. You have none. I am one to start with. He died. Not divorced or anything. Yours never married. Oh, come on. How could they? Yours were awfully conventional. Devotion until death. Are you suggesting my mother loved my father? Why? Do you resent that? Hello, Hamish. Hello. I met Helena in the loo. What are you two wrangling about? Parents. Oh. I'd like a gin and tonic if anyone will buy me one. Yes, of course. A gin and tonic, please. Your, uh, your fathers, are they coming, by the way? They may not be back in time. They're in Vichy. Oh. I think the less said about that, the better. It's a lesson I've learned the hard way, having two small children. Mm -hmm. What I'm dreading on this occasion is being stuck with Powley. I hope to God he isn't staying at the Queen's. Who isn't? Hello, Aunt Polly. The dreaded Powley. Yes. Poor old Max is dead and Powley lives. The ways of divine providence are pretty quirky. Anybody need a drink? Darling, sorry. Did I set fire to you? I have finished here. You may close the coffin now. Yeah, yeah. 2.30 tomorrow. What? Yes? Yes, the house will be for sale. Do you know of a buyer? Tomorrow then, thank you. Tomorrow will do. for tomorrow. Help me unload the car. Goodness, champagne. Do you remember he called it bubbly? Remember the night we celebrated over Hector? Very well. So I thought we'd have bubbly tomorrow. He'd like that. Guess who I saw in town? Powley. He's been here, I hid. Oh, I don't blame you. He's a right sod. Can you manage that? Yes. Hey. Okay. He made a pass at me once. I slept with him. What? How could you? And uh, how his hands were crushed by the guards. I thought I'd teach him how to love. <sighs> hmm. But, darling, you love Oliver. You always did. As a child. How did you... We know? all knew. Your enigmatic little face. Your eyes. Oliver's such an ass. Have 
Have you seen him lately? Not for years. Both his wives. Oh, any more of these? Some stuff in the car. He got over me years and years ago. When we finished our loading, I'm going to take you after dinner. I thought I'd stay the night. Why? Max is all alone. There's food in the fridge. But suppose he comes back. Pauli. He won't. I heard him tell the undertaker. He said the house is up for sale. Not that it matters anymore. <laughs> Oliver, the chamomile lawn. Do you think it smells now? Faintly. I'll keep you company. Let's crack a bottle of Max's bubbly. Right. And the resurrection and the life of the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Please sit. Today we celebrate the life and we, we commend to God the spirit of a great artist. <laughs> Death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Was Max a Protestant? I haven't the foggiest. He must have been something. And he was a Catholic. This is all wrong. Too late now. Shut up. But thanks be to God. What happened? Give it. Was Max a Protestant or a Catholic? Lord, Jew. Why do you ask? Because he's not practicing. Therefore, my Ask yourself who started him. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. and is cut down like a flower. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased? 
Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Good God. Sophie. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, but in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Can you give me a lift? Yes, yes, sir. Of course. Don't you have a car? I came by train. They filled in the harbour. Yes, a very long time ago. Sophie, you will come back to the house, of course. Well, I was... You must come. Calypso has provided drinks, poly food. This is uh, Olive Anstey. I have, of course, heard of you. You will come, too. Helen will be there, I suppose. Yes. We'll come. Last him. He looks so pleased. <clears throat> what Uncle Richard would call a bounder. God, my feet are freezing. I must change my shoes. Your shoes? They're on the back seat. Thanks. You haven't changed. All the others. You've grown old. Not that. I don't mean looks. Aunt Helen is drunk. You better get to the house. Inviting her back to her own house. Damn. Listen. Put down your window. I suppose we have to go to this wake. I want to see Aunt Helen is all right. Aunt Helen is made of sterner stuff than us. She's toned out. You know, a friend of mine watched her read War and Peace during the whole of one of Max's most brilliant performances of the Beethoven Violin Concerto. Bully for her! <laughs> No idea so many people would come. Let's walk round. <laughs> God, I haven't been here since that last holiday before the war. Where, where was it we ran? What? was wired off during the war. It's all overgrown. The National Trust made this new one. I had vertigo. I was... I was terrified. I was frightened, too. I just did it to show off. To gain attention. Let me give you a hand. Does it still smell? Of course. Is uh, Sophie married? Good or no? Not for one of offers. I've been abroad so long, I'm out of touch. I'm a great admirer of yours, actually. I've read all your novels. I suppose you can't come home because of a tax. Tax? Income tax. Oh, no, I'm not that kind of writer. 
Surprised you can read. You're Eclipse's son, aren't you? Yes, I am. Your father was supposed to be killed in the war. I fucked that up like everything else. Upset me at the time. She's a joke now. I liked your father. Went to labor, started planting trees. When Calypso married him, we all thought... Thought what? We all thought what a cunt she was to marry him for his money. You are gone. I... Oh! <laughs> Now, 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 what is going on? Are you squabbling? <laughs> we can't have that. He said I... I said you married for money. So I did. Wisest thing I ever did. Married for money. Then we fell in love. Why did you never tell me? Why did you keep it so bloody secret? You never let on. Why did you let me suffer? You're drunk. Go and eat something oily. You're making an exhibition. Have you got any children, Ollie? No. But you married? Twice. Oh, goodness, I've forgotten. Uh, are you still married now? No. Are you happy? Are you? What happened to your face? I had a little stroke. Yes, thanks. Well, as happy as it's possible to be. Where do you live now? Abroad. All right, don't tell me. Polly's grown very fat and respectable. Spread a little. She's happy, too. Who is the father of... James and Iris? I've never asked. Why don't you? We never dared. Fancy you turning up. Remember me? Tony Wood. We first met on the doorstep of Polly's house. Yes, I remember. Have you seen Sophie? Helena wants her. No. She was here. We came back from the church together. What an exquisite child she was. One almost... Uh, have you met Peter? Peter and I have a shop in Brighton. Antiques and objets. Peter, this is Oliver Anstey. You love his books. Do I, darling? Yes, you do. Now, what about another drink and some of that lovely nosh Polly brought? will sell very well at the hotel in this situation. My father's name also will attract it. It's a unique position. Put in a pool, dig up the lawn, pay for Plastic river. chairs and tubs of fake flowers. One needs planning permission so much as National Trust. Oh, Wally. We're looking for Sophie. It's getting late and Helena wants to see her before she leaves. I know. I can't see her anywhere. I'll look upstairs. Thanks. Sophie... Helena wants you. Oh, what does she want? Are you leaving tonight? Hmm? Yes, very soon. Why are you here? You didn't come to the other funerals. I thought I'd get some ideas for a book I'm writing. Stupid of me. Why are you up here? I used to climb along that branch. An eavesdrop. Will you give me a lift back to London? We could have a meal at the Red Lion in Truro. They pulled it down. It's gone. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Powell is going to dig up the lawn. It belongs to him now. You shouldn't have come back. It's worse for you. Lovely harvest been turned into a bloody great car park. We used to get off the train you could hear the water lapping against the key. I must go to Helena. She planted the lawn. No, please, Oliver. I'm afraid I've got Jumbo in the car. You'll have to phone for a taxi. But you didn't write him. Of course I have. Not seen Al yet. That's all right. What's the secret? Don't keep moving away. Didn't used to be so elusive. She wants her ashes dug into Max and Monica's grave. Good Lord. Why not Uncle Richard's? He's got his dog, didn't you know? It's 
what Max and Monica would want. Uncle Richard wouldn't want her. Why are you so surprised? You used not to be so conventional. <laughs> I was. That was my trouble. If the Red Lion's gone, how about oysters somewhere near the Helford River? We couldn't. I don't go. know. You don't know what? I don't know anything anymore. We'll go somewhere we've neither of us ever been. You're upset. I, I, I caught a chill. I must go. I'm coming with you. No. Where's your wife? What wife? I'm married twice. Calypso lookalikes. Neither worked. What about you? I heard rumours. I dare say you did. Let me go. We're not children. Sixty. And more. You? Fifty. Oh, look. Goodbye, Polly. I'm sorry. For what? I forget what I was going to say. You better come with us. You don't want to get breath alive. What about my car? Run after them, dear boy. And give them this. It will help them through some awkward moments. And look sharp about it. God. You? No, no, thank you. Once you hid behind the curtains of the red room, and I took you to bed to warm you. You smell of soap. Well, a nice soap. I wonder what it was. Rose geranium. When you were still asleep, I put you back in your own room. Do you remember? No. No. Funny little girl you were. Over 45 years ago. So. So now we have whatever's left to catch up. What do you say? We can't. Why not? I'm terrified. What made you think I'm not afraid, too? Mm, whiskey. Do you coke on? I don't feel anything anymore. I don't know you now. I'm old and so are you. I admit there's been a considerable gap in our relationship. If you're thinking of Calypso, it was like loving Greta Garbo or Marilyn Monroe. Sort of measles. A very long attack. And you! All right, a very long attack. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep sneezing like this. I caught cold at the churchyard, looking at the graves. I was beginning to think you were allergic to me. Not that. So you feel something? Terribly hungry. I couldn't eat anything at the wake. 
Let's go and find some oysters. Must be somewhere we can eat on our way. We have no way. We know nothing about each other. There's an enormous gap. Let's start the bloody car and let's see what we can do about filling it. <laughs> you know, we risk making ourselves the object of ridicule. That's a risk we have to take. <laughs> It comes with being born. <laughs> <laughs>